y'all are this afternoon. This is your buddy George Jones over here at the Bergen Gun Range for uh, Polychoke Shotgun Round 2. Uh, we're going to try this old 1960s vintage uh, cuts compensator style Polychoke out. That's this guy. Uh, this one's actually... This is on the Savage 77S or 77B uh, 12 gauge pump shotgun. It's factory installed, and the uh, the cuts compensator is actually marked uh, Savage Speed Choke. Woohoo! <laughs> now it's a it has this expansion chamber out here that supposedly reduces recoil. And then the conventional poly choke style adjustable choke out on the end of it. Uh, I have placed a B21 silhouette around backwards. If you can see it down there. With uh, two target dots on it. One high, one low. So I'm going to take some federal... Uh, Dove loads, number eight, and I'm going to fire two shots, one with it chunked all the way down on full, and one with it on uh, improved cylinder, and see if there's actually any difference in the way it works. I uh, I always had a, a thing about the expansion deal here, because the shot column goes into this open area that's way bigger than the bore, and then funnels into the choke. And, you know, I don't know how that can work. <laughs> Just to tell you the truth, I don't know that that uh, that can work. So we got it on modified there. We get some ear mufflers on and shoot uh, the modified at the top one and then chunk it down on full and see if it shoots any different. There and there. Go shell in there. And make sure it's all safe. I think it is. All right. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, here we go. Kicking the shotgun they ever made. Okay. Good shot, and it didn't blow off. All right. Now let's run her down to the full setting. Okay, put no shell in there, and see how it shoots on the full setting. All right. Now, take these old ear mufflers off, and we'll go down here and uh, look at this guy. La -de -dee -dee -da -da -de -dee. <laughs> well, let's see. <clears throat> With the open bore setting modified, it's all in here. And it shoots my point of aim, my bead and lead was right there. And it shot a lower pattern. My point of aim was here on the full setting. Uh, the shot pattern is much denser. It does seem to does seem to work. It's more an elliptical shape right around in here, but uh, it does it does work. Or two shots worth of testing, it seems to work. So. Did you cut it off? You know, no, I probably wouldn't. Uh, it doesn't seem to. The only real thing that the poly choke, cuts compensator, wind choke type of arrangement has got against it is it's ugly. That's the main thing people have against it is that it's ugly.
but uh, in reality, it it seems to deliver uh, what the old literature said it would deliver. It would uh, it would shoot. It would change the pattern of the gun. Now that one that one don't shoot to center bead. It's off and low uh, to the right. You know. Let's try it on one of these old steel drum heads and see if we can ring it while we're sitting here not doing nothing. And it does seem to reduce the recoil. If I remember right, these things are one of the hardest kicking shotguns on the market. They're like a 37 Ithaca. The axis of the bore in relationship to the drop in the comb of the stock is profound. And whenever you get away from that axis of the bore, this is why an AR-15 doesn't kick much. You know, anytime you get that comb of that stock away from the axis of the bore, the more the drop, the more it's going to kick. Now, that's the long and the short of it. So these guys are profound kickers, like a 37 Ithaca, you know, like an old uh, Cannon Breach White Powder Wonder shotgun where the, where the comb drops a lot away from the barrel. There are profound kickers, but uh, this one doesn't seem to kick too bad. And it appears to me that, and this is one of the problems with this design. You get it out of time and it don't work. All right, let's try this again. All right. Um, another problem these guys got is this. Um, the way you load it. When you put that shell in there, it kicks out to this little keeper. Well, under recoil a lot of times, this little keeper gizmo right there, that guy, if you can see it and look at one, look at yours, you know, the shell will jump off of that, get onto the carrier while the bolt is shut. And then the bolt can't come back and that locks the gun up. Let's see what happens. This one seems to work pretty good. Uh, this gun is uh, complements of uh, Apache Armament over in uh, uh, Lebanon, over here. Uh, Charles Williams and his staff. And <laughs> I guess I'm one of his staff because I build guns for him too. Uh, they, uh, they do a lot with automatic weapons, they do a lot with law enforcement transfers, they do a lot with uh, <coughs> class 3 stuff, suppressors, short barrel rifles, short barrel shotguns, AOWs, uh, 40 millimeter stuff, like that. But they also go to gun shows, and they do gun shows, they buy guns from uh, state gun auctions around the country, and subsequently they come up with some pretty weird stuff. And... Um, Subsequently, they allow me to uh, uh, take guns off their inventory that are for sale and bring them out, demonstrate them, make videos, and so forth. So, uh, you know, that's they don't put anything on Patreon, but on the other hand, they definitely support the channel. They definitely support me. Uh, and they definitely support you. So we'll shoot this thing once or twice and see if we can get it to hang up. work good this is about the best working one I've seen in a while uh, mostly these Savage 77s they don't work very smoothly <coughs> they don't work very good now this one was made in the 1960s so <coughs> this is back when Savage was well Savage is a really great gun company now uh, Savage, before its reorganization in 1974, was getting kind of, eh, 
they're getting kind of long in the tooth. Uh, this gun was probably made when they were still paying attention to what they were doing. I've got three shots left on this thing. Let's try three more here and see if we can make it work. You know, this thing can make a pretty good dove gun, just to tell you the truth. You can get past that. You can get past that corn cob out there on the end. <laughs> you can get past this corn cob out here on the end of it. This this make a pretty good dove gun. It's a good full choke shotgun. But that was the thing with with the cuts and with the uh, cuts and the poly choke. Basically, you had this snout and corn cob arrangement out here on the end of the gun, and it was ugly. Perform? Yeah, yeah, it performs to the degree. Most of them do. Uh, the pattern is a little blown on this one, but uh, you can still get meat with it. I mean, you know, uh, the uh, full choke setting is pretty tight, as you saw on the uh, on the paper. Uh, what you got to where you got your lead and stuff down with it pretty good, you know, you can hit with it. You just have to know you have to beat off a little bit to the left. Other than that, you're in pretty good shape, Bart. Well... That's about the size of that uh, poly choke explanation and test, part two. And uh, hope it helps you out a little bit. Uh, like, date, share, fire, commentate, subscribe. Uh, uh, Patreon link in the description if you can stand to do that. Uh, I don't care if it's a dollar a month, you know, or nothing. We'll figure out something else. Uh, I'm going to keep making videos regardless of whether or not anybody gives me anything off the Patreon because um, it's not about that really it's about you it's about information uh, appreciate you coming out and looking at my stuff and hope that gave you a little bit of information that you can use on down the road well we'll see y'all